Hey, all you vinyl community people, all my music loving friends and everybody else out there um, in YouTube land. It's Mike MGK Boston back with another video. I know I said I wasn't going to do another one when I put that video up a couple days ago. Um, however, uh, I was just lying around on the couch today, uh, turkey hangover. It's uh, day after Thanksgiving here in the U.S. And I was just lying around watching some YouTube videos and up popped uh, Brian over at the Embryonic Robot. Um, apparently it was a part two he was doing, just simply titled, um, Five Bad Album Covers. It's, uh, it's, it's not a threat or anything, but maybe it'll turn into that. Um, it's a real simple one. So I'm going to one-up you, as they say in Vegas, and I'm going to raise you to six. This is going to be six bad album covers. This was pretty simple. I just kind of skimmed through Discogs and I was like, yeah, that's pretty terrible. That's terrible too. And just pulled them out of the, off the shelves here. So, um, anyway, yeah. So like I said in my last video, um, I was not going to make another video until next week um, and bring my wife Patty on board. We're going to have that contest introduction. Uh, Patty was so well received in my last video. We uh, going to make that an element of this, uh, this contest. That's one, only a uh, hint I'm going to give you next week. Full disclosure, probably the end of next week, um, put the contest uh, out there in the subject that that's going to involve. But anyway, for today, um, like I said, um, it's, it's going to be six bad album covers. And believe me, these are bad. Um, when I watched uh, Brian's video earlier, his was a little more nuanced. I had to agree with him on that Morrissey solo album. That was pretty pathetic. But Morrissey's a really whacked out guy these days. He's uh, not himself, as the saying goes. Um, but those early Smiths covers, yeah, and I've got most of them in the 12-inch singles. Can't believe what they're worth now they're worth the price of fine jewelry but anyway um yeah the artwork was our artwork was always very consistent and uh, i don't know i just don't know what morrissey was thinking of that so i'm with you on that one brian but yeah some of his others were a little more nuanced these are dreadful most of these so uh there'll, there'll be no doubt in your mind all right that said uh can't figure out what's going on here if she's the queen of egypt or what because on the cover this is amy stewart by the way this is, uh, I think Giorgio Moroder might have had a hand in this. This is, I want to say, release date on this one's 1979. This is pretty much straight up disco. Um, it's really good. Uh, I don't mind it. I've had this for a really long time. I uh, won't say I bought it when it came out, but I definitely bought this when I was a young teenager, a uh, very young teenager, probably 12, 13, uh, and still have it. Um, mostly the, the, you know, the main track on this, uh, it's a number called uh, Knock on Wood. And there's also, um, you can look up, there's various versions of that. It's been remixed a bunch of times. It's a huge disco disco song, but it's weird. There she is on the front. Like I said, I don't know what she's got. This headdress is like disco queen of Egypt. Like I said, I don't know what's going on. But then you flip around the back and she's straight up like 1982. Um, but this again was from 79. But that her look here, uh, way different, right? But this is definitely one of those albums where the back cover should not be the front. I mean, this front's just... It's, it's got a lot going on here, but it's, uh, of course, the title track and the name of this album, Knock on Wood. First uh, on my list of six bad album covers, and again, these are uh, in no particular order. They're all equally bad, but it doesn't mean the music's bad, right? Um, otherwise, I, I would have got rid of these things. But anyway, here he goes. Uh, here he is, rather. It's uh, the King of Funk. Uh, late great Rick James, um, there he is. He's just hanging out on a street corner like people do, uh, wearing a pair of thigh-high leather boots, again, like people do, with uh, an electric guitar uh, unplugged, like people do, right? Um, <laughs> and this is called, uh, what's this called? Yeah, uh, street songs. Well, he's out there in the street, so he's singing songs in the street. Um, this is pretty funny stuff. Um, backstory on this one. I was in middle school and my parents, we used to always go to Florida, um, really early spring, like spring break, uh, not, not the party scene. Cause I was very young. Um, that came later, <laughs> but, um, we used to go down to this place called Cocoa beach. And I remember they were these older teenagers and they had a big giant boom box. Cause it was late seventies, 79, 1980. And they were blasting, uh, none other than, uh, super freak right there. And that's what, yeah, Rick James has, everybody called him the super freak. And believe me, his personal life, he was a real super freak, if you read up on Rick James, um, like late, great Rick James. But um, this back cover is not too far from what Rick used to get up to in his personal life. There he is with a couple of prostitutes getting arrested, it looks like. 
that would have been a typical Saturday night for Rick James uh, at the time. Um, yeah, so <laughs> some of the names of the songs in here. Give It To Me Baby, Ghetto Life, Make Love To Me, and then Side One rounds out with uh, Mr. Policeman, maybe dedicated to this guy down, down here in front. But again, um, it's Rick James, it's Street Songs, number two on this countdown of bad album covers. I'm going to jump into one here, and also another one that uh, Brian thought, and this might be a good idea too for a future subject or a thread, if you will. It's um, albums with the back sleeve should have been the cover art, right? So this is a hair band called Cinderella, if you're not familiar, Long Cold Winter. I don't know if this was their debut or their second album. Definitely one of those two. Uh, I, I would have picked this up in university. This is, uh, yeah, released in 88, so I was in my college years. A buddy of mine was really into hair bands, and I actually didn't mind Cinderella. And uh, the lead singer's got a really good set of pipes. Um, but, um, yeah, you've got... Bad Seamstress Blues, Gypsy Road, Don't Know What You Got Till It's Gone, that's a nice ballad. Uh, Long Cold Wind on the title track, but yeah, it's just very bland looking cover. And then on the inside, I believe this was the, this was the back on the, on the, the vinyl LP, of course, this is a compact disc. And there's the band on the back, you know, and some credits at, at the bottom, like produced by Andy Johns, et cetera, engineered by Andy Johns. But this would have been better on the back cover. And I believe this was the back sleeve on the actual LP. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, there they are again on the inside. Uh, to look at that look. Does that not scream 1988? Uh, this is late 80s. But still, uh, it's Cinderella. It's Long Cold Winter. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a bad album cover, but it's considering, you know, the look of these guys. That should have been on the front. You know, it's, it's just screams what these guys are all about. And, you know, it's just rocking it out with Hot Chicks. That was Cinderella, 1988. All right, hair metal, right? Love it or hate it. All right. Uh, but when you love it and you're in the mood for it, it's perfect. All right, since uh, we're heading into the holidays, put the A in A and M. It's uh, Mr. Herb Albert, um, a good friend of Jerry Moss, who was the M in A and M. So this is Herb, a uh, big fan. Um, like a, a bunch of his stuff, my dad, I, I've mentioned my dad's collection, a lot of easy listening and all that stuff. Um, my daughter, teenage daughter, she's in college now, but she she loved Christmas music. And I, I just pulled these out, so I'll be playing these um, for her and stuff when we're uh, getting festive around here, like we're known to do uh, at this time of year. But uh, there's Herb, uh, not sure the release date on this one, um, but he just does a bunch of standards. I don't know how, he's play, how he can play his trumpet through that fake beard, but he, he, he's getting it done on this one. He covers them all here, Winter Wonderland. Uh, it does a nice version of my favorite things, actually. I don't really associate that as a Christmas song, but I guess some do. Um, uh, Let It Snow, Jingle Bell Rock, um, and of course it's produced by Herb Albert and Jerry Moss. Hey, uh, where are we? Uh, no, that's right above there, sorry. There's the production credits. So anyway, yeah, that's uh, number four on this on this list of six bad album covers. It's uh, Christmas. It's Herb Albert and the Tijuana Brass, simply titled Christmas Album. There you go. And there he is on the back with some of the sidemen. Um, no one else is wearing a beard, just Herb. All right. <laughs> All right. As I mentioned before, um, I grew up in Canada. I've been in the States now, you know, going on 18 years. My formative years, I thought was into the Guess Who, and this guy was the lead singer. It's Burton Cummings. This is fun at parties, all right? Hey, it's me, Burton. Seasons greetings, everyone. There he is on the back. I mean, I'd stick just with the headshot. I mean, look at that sweater. Jesus. Anyway, uh, this is like a double double compilation, uh, double double LP set. It's not even a gatefold. Burton cheaped out here. He could have had a gatefold sleeve and showed more of his fashion choices for the time, right? And uh, instead of putting his giant mug on the cover, so we're on the inside here. It's on the CBS label. So yeah, he, he likes his ballads, like Stan Tall. Um, what else on here for the ballads? Uh, well, My Own Way to Rock, that's that's pretty good. Charlemagne's an all right track. Got to find another way. I mean, this is kind of like I call it um, waiting in the dentist's office music, you know, some adult contemporary radio station playing in the background. Are you going to hear a song like Stand Tall? But uh, yeah, I bought this in middle school. 
but uh, there's there's worse things. Uh, so I've never I've always held on. Breaking to them gently is another one. Uh, I will play a rhapsody. This this one's really loaded with the ballads, but look at that. Eh? Yeah, bad album covers. This qualifies. It's Bur it's the best of Burton Cummings. Not sure the release date on this one. It looks like 1980 on CBS. That's right, 1980. All right. Move a little further into the 80s. It's the Boomtown Rats. Formed by Sir Bob Geldof right there. There he is. Uh, he's crowned by the Queen of England for all his uh, charity work relative to world famine. Uh, of course, he peaked out in 85 with the whole Live Aid Festival. So this, this album came out right before that uh, in 1984. And it's, of course, called uh, In the Long Grass. Um, let me take it out of this sleeve. It's a little glistening there. So again... I don't know what's going on, and I always thought this was weird. I bought this in high school, you know, when it came out. I thought, what what the hell's going on here? It's like Bob Geldof's wearing a shitty, like, it looked like straight out of Kmart, um, gray sweatsuit. That's that's all you could come up with. Um, just terrible. And then this guy looks like he just came out of working in a coal mine. And, uh, yeah, again, and this fellow over here, he's, he's breaking a sweat. I don't know. Um, uh, it's just really bizarre. And then for, for whatever reason, this guy in the center, I don't know if this, I think he was the drummer, uh, not wearing any shoes, but, and then, but then, you know, Bob Geldof's wearing socks, but no shoes. So it's just, there's a lot of really bad, I mean, you could say a lot about eighties fashion, but this, this isn't coherent with anything. Um, it's just, they all look so morose and bummed out. They're probably retired of Bob with all his side projects and all this stuff. He wasn't putting enough energy into the band or his wardrobe. Uh, with all being preoccupied with uh, the pending Live Aid show coming the following year. I'm speculating on that, but uh, and that's my attempt at trying to be funny. Do with that what you will. But this is a really good album, um, despite the, the, the fashion sense or lack of it on here. A Hold of Me is a great song. Drag Me Down, Rain, um, Hard Times. I mean, this is, it's, it's really solid, solid work here. And um, yeah, and they were on, was on the Vertigo label right there. Let me show the inside here, just a picture of a bug. And there's just a couple of lyrics. And of course, you got the credits here on the back. But yeah, uh, In the Long Grass, great album, terrible cover, terrible cover. You uh, you be the judge. Number five on this list. And closing things out again, no particular order. They're all equally terrible. It's America, uh, greatest hits. Uh, it's just called History, America's Greatest Hits. This is what you uh, ironically produced. I didn't realize they were produced by George Martin of Beatles fame. Um, I don't know what's going on here. They're called America, yet there's a British Parliament, uh, a double-decker um, bus. Uh, are they in London or are they in America? I mean, if you were called England, this would make perfect sense, but they're, they're called America, so I don't know what's going on here. And, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge over here, I'm assuming that's what that is. I guess that makes sense because that's at least in the States. But yeah, um, and then they're like cartoonish looks. I mean, this, he's, the one dude's looking like, he looks more like he's in the Gatlin Brothers than America, but you know, whatever. And then the dude down in front here with the shades, trying, you know, he's looking sort of cool, I guess. But when you look closely, his shirt is, is like a giant hedgerow. It's like he's, he's got weeds growing all over him. Odd, odd, I would say. Yeah, so, and, and nothing really going on in the back here, more kind of cartoonish stuff, but some of the songs on here, you know these all. Venture Highway, uh, A Horse With No Name, of course, Muskrat Love, and Sister Golden Hair. I mean, they're all good songs, and it's, again, you know, this this is captured by that whole genre that they call now Yacht Rock, and, um, yeah, it's just background music. Again, perfect for the dentist's office. Uh, there's worse things you could listen to while you're waiting to get teeth extracted, and that's America, greatest hits, or history, if you will. So shout out to my friend Brian at Embryonic Robot. R Embryonic Robot. I'm, I'm curious to know where Brian Brian gets that channel name. I, I tried to Google it, couldn't find anything of it. I thought it might have been from a science fiction movie. I know my channel, MGK Boston. It's simply my initials, um, and it's where I've lived for several years. Um, so when I was a kid in high school, they used to call me, once in a while, Magic was my nickname because it was MGK, and I, that was a nickname, uh, Magic Mike. But um, anyway, um, I'm just off topic here. But yeah, Brian, I'm curious to know where you got the name uh, for your channel. It's, it's intriguing. And this is, again, a shout out for that. So anybody else wants to jump on this, it's kind of fun. 
uh, pick five or six uh, bad album covers. So Brian just posted a video today by that same name if you want to search it up on YouTube. And um, his choices, like I said, were not as obvious. But again, um, like music and most things, this is subjective opinion. It's just, yeah, it's just, the, it's up to, uh, you know, us as individuals. Wait, what, what we think. Whoa, geez, there's Patty coming in the room unannounced. Hey guys, here's Patty. Say hi, Patty. Hi. There she is. Just, uh, just yeah. Cheesecake. <laughs> She's trying to get cheesecake out of the beer fridge here. It's, it's a nightmare. We've got food overflow going on with the holiday yesterday, but, um, yeah, rounding out this video with that little excitement, uh, a special guest shot from Patty. You'll see her more next week, like I said, when we, we mentioned that uh, and highlight what's coming with the contest. So enjoy the long weekend if you're in the, in the United States or wherever else you are. Have a good one, and I'll see you next time.